You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. From the AfterBuzz studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menounos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is AfterBuzz TV's Gossip Girl After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424-256-1729. That's 424-256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Gossip Girl After Show. Hello, Gossip Girl fans. Bing is for doing. So we are here doing another AfterBuzz TV Gossip Girl special. This is Season 5, Episode 17, Princess Dowries. And before we do anything else, I just want to say I am Roxy Stryer. This is the lovely Jessica King. <laughs> and, of course, we have Ronnie and Phil in the booth. So thank you guys for helping us out tonight. I'm so excited that I get an applause today and not a boo. Yeah, I know. <laughs> Last week, I think it was a slip of the button. <laughs> Not really. We planned that, didn't we, Ronnie? We, we planned I feel that like out. it was a little planned. No, yeah. <laughs> Boo. No, I, I'll cheer you all day long. Okay, so I want to jump right into this episode, which, as you have said, was so crazy. Good. It was so oh, good. Okay, but I, I have to say, I'm I'm struggling with a couple things. Number one. Are we are we in a soap opera? Is it too soap opera or did we pull a little bit back this week from the soap opera? Um, I don't know. Like I wouldn't think of it as soap opera, but I do understand like there was so much going on in this episode. I feel like they're just packing all the episodes chock full of so much drama. So I could see where it can relate to a soap opera in that way. It makes me nervous that they're trying to cram everything in because I feel like they know something we don't know about where Gossip Girl is going as a whole. You know what I mean? Yeah, totally. Is is this, are, are we struggling for seasons right now? Are they trying to get everything out there while we can? Well, I mean, I don't think it's a huge secret that there's probably not that much more of Gossip Girl to go. What? <laughs> I, I know. Don't know. So it still makes me really sad. You have to enjoy it though. while it lasts. I know, and I'm trying to enjoy it, but it's hard when I'm getting so much information. I feel like I can't even process every single thing i mean every week somebody has a different dad or somebody else dies and i mean I, let's start by talking about that we have a huge death last episode with cc and we pick up this episode and nobody's mourning nobody's talking about how their lives have been impacted we have a uh, this crazy i understand the concept of the celebration of life but this was unlike crazy. anything i've ever heard of before so we have this in Cece's will, she specifies how she wants her wake to be done. She'd already planned it. She'd already planned it. And what does it consist of? Um, Irish music and <laughs> just... And, and all the help is, are there. Yeah. And no, that's not the cast of the help, but <laughs> the, the the help, as they refer to them, uh, her, her butler, somebody who once saved her from falling out of a tree or something? It's just like that? a bunch of random people. And it was really weird how it had already started by the time Lily even got home. So it was just really this completely planned affair that was so was odd. bizarre, <laughs> totally bizarre. So they're all there, and there's this whole issue, though, of the will. And pun intended, William <laughs> deals with the will. And he has been picked by Cece... God knows why. Because they had a good relationship. Hey, but, you guys. Uh, the phone lines for you are, are, you know, ringing off the hook. So we might as well take a call right now. If awesome. that's good with you. All right. Hello. What's your name? Where are you from? Hello, caller. Caller's oh. lost. Caller's gone. Call they, back. They clearly were confused about this episode as well. <laughs> I, mean, I know. They were just speechless. Be so speechless. <laughs> this gossip girl just does it for them um okay but 
uh, let's talk about this will and he has control over the situation and uh, what are all the different pieces of information well can i just say how hard it is to understand that you know obviously william has such an important part of this whole will thing and in cc's life and no one had any clue about it he shows up at their house he doesn't call anyone or give them any sort of warning like hey even if he wasn't c coming for the will you know to call and be like i'm sorry for your loss i, I heard cc passed i want to come to the wake because even if he's not with lily it's still his daughter's Jessica, grandmother obviously that call took place <laughs> off air yes they are you kidding duh they live it out <laughs> edited that out and didn't make the cut no but i agree we see this all the time it's like logistically mm, this doesn't work yeah no way um but in this okay we'll let it be that's fine but i i really need us to go over everything that the will stated so it's we learn that where lily lives isn't actually lily's but instead it's cc's because she bought it for Lily and William? A financial decision. Okay. Wasn't it? Yeah, I think so. So that's one. So it's not theirs. Mm -hmm. Number two is that she doesn't leave much for Carol and leaves almost everything for Lily. But it's like stupid stuff. Like wh what was it? Like collections of, of paintings and trinkets and just random the stuff that he was naming off was so random and even that's why lily and carol were just like okay and and of course it was all to lily but it was still just like such insignificant stuff i feel like i i do agree but they probably thought they were going to get something more mm -hmm. but then in the end we see the biggest thing goes to charlie ivy charlie ivy dickens <laughs> charlie, charlie ivy, ivy dickens charlie rhodes ivy and dickens she she gets what does she get all the money or the estate yeah, everything everything she gets yeah. everything other than the stupid collections yeah but it's to her name it's her to real name right it's to ivy, ivy dickens, dickens. <laughs> i get she tripped up every confused. time i get tripped up every time so it's to ivy dickens because as ivy later on informs lily and rufus she was never she never lied to cc or that's what she says she was honest the whole time, and that Cece knew who she actually was. And knew all of her secrets. So we, we're at an odds right now because I think one thing and you think another. We're having a little bit of a Twitter fight. Mm -hmm. And maybe people can help us out because <laughs> I don't even know how to explain this argument. It sounds so ridiculous. You think, what do you think about who Ivy Dickens really is? I think regardless of the fact, I mean, I totally obviously believe it's out there now that Cece knew who she was and she was honest with her, but I definitely think it was all part of Ivy's scheme because she knew that she would get money out of it at some point. And it would be one thing if she had been like, you know, Cece and I had a relationship, she knew the whole time, I didn't have any secrets from her, but instead she turned into a complete bitch, tried to take the house away from them, and that shows that she really knew what she was doing this whole time and had ill intentions of doing it. Poor Cece is like on her deathbed and it just makes so much sense to be like, I'm gonna tell her the truth. I'm gonna apologize profusely and promise to take care of her and stick around because she's obviously not gonna be lasting much longer. Okay. And that way, I just, I knew all along that she was gonna get a huge lump sum. Cece didn't even leave anything for Serena. Or her her grandson Wait, Eric, on, who he never who just disappeared, by the way. I think I think we have a phone call that we need to take, but I am in disagreement <laughs> with you. So if we have a caller on the line, what is your name? Where are you from? Help us sort this out. Hi guys, it's Susie. Oh hi Susie. Hi. We really need your help right now. I I honestly I think I'm about to get completely torn apart by both of you, but what's the deal with Ivy Dickens and is she a bad cat or is yes. she or is she really nice for helping somebody who's not even her family member pass on to a better place? I mean, what, like, why else would she take their money? Like, she literally, she took everything from them. Like, she, I just don't get it. She, what, like, I don't get it. And I, I want to hear, I'm just putting this out into the After Buzz universe so that if anyone else wants to call in, because I did 
realize that on our last episode, someone had commented that they think that Ivy, just like you say, has a good heart and feels bad and is just doing this to kind of fix what she's broken. So I definitely am open to hearing other perspectives. Please call in if you want to give us that perspective. But uh, Susie, explain. I'm glad that you have some good sense in you and that you agree with me. Okay, okay. Hold on for a second here, girls teaming up against me. Now listen, <laughs> this is a girl who, yes, she probably thought she would get some money out of this. But she continues to, continues to say, these are the people to me that are most like family. Yeah, and they're, I, they don't want her around. Right, but they keep if they were to let her in and accept her a little bit, they keep kicking her out. So what else is she supposed to do than try to kick the, I don't know. I just feel like she's being pushed into a corner, and I feel really bad for her. Well, you know what? She's lived without family for all these years, so she could go back to that. What's the <laughs> deal with that? Why doesn't she have family? Did we, we found out about that. Susie, do you remember? I, I you know what? I don't remember. I, I just find the whole situation so pointless but I'm interested in finding out if there is some other reason why why she why Lily's sister hired her to play to play her daughter well Um, I, I think part of it must be and we learn in tonight's episode that William supposedly is the father of the actual Charlie Rose right right Charlie Lola Charlie Lola so Maybe she didn't want anybody ever doing DNA tests on her actual daughter. Hmm. It would make sense uh, that she would keep her away from yeah. the family. I mean, because really, that means that we find out not only are Serena and Lola sisters, cousins, but they're also sisters. Yes. Right? Or what does that make them? Half sisters. Half sisters. Oh, yeah. yeah, they're half sisters. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Oh, my gosh is right. So we just were hit with a shit ton of bricks this episode. I mean, holy crap. Yeah. A lot of um, information. Can I, learned. can I point something out that you went, oh, you went over like a couple of minutes ago? That's why I called in so early. I had to get this. I was confused about the apartment being um, the apartment belonging to Lily. Because if I'm not mistaken, I don't know. I could be totally wrong. But in the first your second episode of the whole series of Gossip Girl, like, they're, Serena and, and Lily are living in a hotel, and then they move into that apartment or something like that. I don't know. I could be totally wrong. And the, by the first, by the beginning of the series, she had broken up with her, with William, and they weren't, he wasn't in their life. I don't know. That, I, that's just something that I remember. As but. you're talking about that, I cannot, for the life of me, remember the first season anymore. It's I do so remember far. them living in a hotel, though. I do. Like, We're going to yeah. have to go back and watch that because mm-hmm. I'm telling you, people are noticing online, blogging about it. Gossip Girl is messing up there a little bit, you know? I mean, I'll give it to them. Yeah. That's fine. And there's a lot of storylines to remember, but. As a writer, that's your job. I'm definitely curious how yeah. those writing sessions go because obviously there's been so many seasons now that, you know, for all of us who've watched it from beginning to now, it's hard for us to keep track. So is it the kind of thing where do they consult their older scripts or, you know, does anyone, you know, speak up and say, hey, wait, that's going to contradict the fact that we started the series with them living in a hotel or something like that, or they're just like, forget it. No one's going to remember. Even if yeah. it's not the writers, but the actors and actresses, I feel like they would at least remember, wait a second, I remember yeah. when I was filming and this script, that's not what happened. Mm-hmm. Or whoever. Well, I mean, if we remember, how can they not? I mean, may, maybe they're way busier and they're not, like, too invested or whatever, but if we remember, then... I don't know. But did but. she say in the show that Cece bought the house for Lily and, and William? or did Because I was under the impression that she just bought the house for Lily. Because I remember them saying Cece actually bought the house for you. It was a business investment. But I don't remember. I think she said for Lily for and William. William. Okay. I think yeah, that's, that's what I thought. That's why I was confused. But, yeah, I don't know. I know, I know Rocky, like, hearing about mistakes in writing or whatnot. So yeah. I thought. No, definitely, yeah. and I, I'm not trying to nitpick here, but these are pretty big things. And when you're you have this huge TV show, you you got to cover your butt and make mm-hmm. sure you're doing it right. I'm kind of sick and tired of feeling so confused. It makes me feel a little <laughs> stupid. <Yeah. laughs> 
No, I mean, <laughs> I'm sitting here and I'm realizing last season when we were covering Gossip Girl, I was I don't feel like I was always walking in saying, so much happened, it was amazing. I'm really confused. Yeah. I feel like yeah. that wasn't, I was saying, so much happened, it was amazing. Let's talk about it. But now I'm kind of like, it, it is still amazing, but I, am, am I messing up? Yeah. Are they messing up? Is, what's going through the cracks here? It's a loaded, what? each episode is a loaded episode. I feel if you were to miss one episode, you would just be so lost for the next you one. You would be an entire yeah. season behind. <laughs> yeah, and it didn't used to be like that. Like I like I said when I first started covering Gossip Girl here after Buzz, this used to be one of my shows. I've always watched it from the beginning, but... I used to be able to do 20 million things while I was watching Gossip Girl and I would still be able to keep up. And now it's like I have to close my computer. I'm like checking my text during commercial breaks. It's like if I'm not paying attention, either that or I'm just going to constantly be rewinding because so much is going on. It's true. And a lot of times in the studio, we take notes as we go because, you know, we go on pretty quick after or whatever it is. And if I go to write something down, I'll look up or I'll hear you next to me whenever we do watch together and you'll go, oh, and I'll look up and go, what? And I missed an entire scene Yeah, because I'm writing a couple words down. So now it's like, okay, eyes glued to this. Don't blink. Do not <laughs> blink. So, yeah, I mean, I love that they're throwing all this stuff at us and maybe they just have a lot more faith in us as the audience members to know everything and pick everything up maybe they just want to go out with a bang and you know if they don't throw all these curveballs in it then they're afraid it might you know because like we said last season wasn't the most thrilling season that they've ever had you know and, and yeah. they don't want people saying that i mean who knows if this is the last season or if there's going to be another one but they don't want to be remembered as like well the last season was kind of lame you know so that's true that's true and we were talking about last week this is the same creator josh schwartz as uh who did oc and mm -hmm. there was a lot of uh negative vibes about the final season, season of the oc yeah especially after they killed Marissa off. And I think he's probably oh. like, I'm not doing that this time, yeah. you know? So, Because I feel like this season they're even introducing a lot more new cast members than normal. Like, you usually get a few per season. But this year, I feel like every other episode, there's someone new in there and someone willing trying to take down someone else and standing in the way and, and whatever how you know? many unknown siblings cousins parents aunts <laughs> uncles can we have in the show husbands you know? <laughs> like, husbands babies like oh i blacked out and had a baby but i didn't remember yeah i just made up a new story well, my sister's husband that's fine <laughs> that, no biggie <laughs> xoxo okay so we, we see a lot of drama there uh and that part is confusing but the storyline that i'm really trying to focus on here is of course with Blair. Okay, so yeah. All right, I think I have this one straight. Blair is looking for any way to get out of her marriage. Period. Uh, and so she has Cyrus trying to figure out with his lawyer how they can get out of this or prenup and no dowry Without having and to pay the dowry. Right. So they're working on that. Meanwhile. In last week's episode, we see that Elsie, and if that's not her actual name, that's what I'm calling the secretary to Louis. Do you who know? is now Blair's secretary. Who's now Blair's secretary. secretary. I think it was Elsie, not like Elsie, like... Like the hills. Elsie, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. Anyway. Or Creeper, Close enough. what Blair calls her. Yeah, Creeper, exactly. Let, that's a better one. So Creeper, who we see in last week is in love with Louis when she covers her hand over Blair's face to look at Louis. But then, <laughs> Jesus. <And> then, <laughs> <laughs> you could do it, um, Rox. And this week we see that she pretends to want to help Blair and comes up with this whole story saying that she will call somebody and she will be the new princess and Blair's off the hook and as long as Blair stays out of the public light and blah, 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 blah. And Blair is like, okay, let's do it. Even though Cyrus has already found a loophole in the prenup. And then it turns out that neither of those things actually work out. And they both fall through. Mm -hmm. Is that what happens? <laughs> yeah, and you know what's weird is that this is a side of Blair. I know we've mentioned this before, but we're just seeing this whole new side of Blair. It's like she's a totally different person because she would never 
Trump has been that gullible before. Like, even when Elsie was saying it, I was like, yeah, right. Shut up, you know? And for Blair to be like, really? Um, and even, you know, at the end, which I'm sure we'll talk about later, but when she makes the deal with Georgina, like, she's just giving in to everything so easily, so quickly. And she would have never, she would have been the last person to make a deal with someone that she barely knows. She would never, she hardly trust. In the past, she would hardly trust her best friend yeah. Serena or the people that she's even close with, like Chuck or something, you know? So it's. So I don't know if her character development is amazing or brutal. You know? Yeah. Like, is this a job well done by Leighton Meester? I mean, I think she's incredible, but is, she, is this what the script is asking for? And she has turned into a different person because, I mean, we're on season five. That's a lot of growing up that you can do in five seasons. Or. Is this like what? Why is her character going this direction? Mm -hmm. And I really don't know. Uh, Susie, what do you think about Blair's character and the direction she's going in? I think she's gotten more immature. I mean, season three when she was dating Chuck, she I mean she she grew as a person. I get. I mean, yeah, I, I think she did. And then, well, season four she was trying to you know find herself and you know be, become independent and now season five she she's just so confused and she's so immature part of now, me I agrees I mean, part of me agrees especially with the dan situation and that's her best friend's uh, ex-boyfriend slash brother <laughs> yeah like she needs, this sounds she needs ridiculous to make up her mind. She Ronnie must she be. Knows she shouldn't have gotten married uh -huh. <laughs> Ronnie's sitting in the booth like this is so over my head. Who the hell are these people talking about? What the hell? I told is going you you got to start watching Ronnie. I'm gonna try to watch it because you said Josh Schwartzman or whatever yeah, his name John, is. He Josh Schwartz. He yeah. did OC, so I watched every OC episode. So Love maybe it's OC. just as good. I don't know. What's the better show? Oh, okay. I would have to say Gossip Girl overall is the better show, but the first season of the OC was like boom, you will rock. And the second season too. I but don't then know. It just... I have to disagree. I'm like was such a huge OC fan. I, I mean, I love Gossip Girl too, but I, I loved mean, the OC. I love the OC <laughs> storylines, but I'm more invested in the Gossip Girl characters. I think. And what were you saying about yeah. season five on OC being canceled? And you would, he, Josh, wouldn't make that mistake again. What, what were you re referring what to? What I'm saying is people hated season four because once Marissa was killed off. Mm -hmm. They were like, what the hell is this show? It just ended. It didn't end well. And I'm saying he's like, uh-uh, I'm not going to have another show spiral down and down and down until we don't. nobody wants to watch another season. I'm going to cram in all this drama and, and keep everybody on their toes so that people keep tuning in. Because what I will say, no matter how confused I am, no matter how much storyline, no matter how ridiculous... It makes for good TV, and it makes me keep coming back to watch each episode. That I will say. I do feel a little stupid while I'm watching, but <laughs> and it's a little ridiculous that I'm sitting there taking, like, as if I was having a test on it notes. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, and diagrams, and this is what's going on here. Oh, this I, I love the way these become your friends. Like, this, I is, know. this is your real life. You know we, what? There's other friends that are hitting us up. Let's grab another call if that's cool with you ladies. Absolutely. And just to, um, you know, we were talking about... Uh, so much going on and pro pro possibly the end of Gossip Girl and whatnot, Josh Schwartz is signed on to a new pilot for CW. So, wow. I mean, you never know. The Carrie Diaries are going to start, which is the prequel to Sex and the City. They've started casting. News came out, came out today that Anna Sophia Robb is going to be playing young Carrie Bradshaw, so maybe his mind is going somewhere else and and maybe they're just getting as much into gossip girl as possible before they have to focus their attention wow because it's very the same good network and I, everything we can talk about it more in uh news and gossip but i want to make sure that we uh see our caller there um on, on the line ronnie he was or he she was, was yeah you still on but, the line caller hello hi what's your name where are you from my name is katie i'm from uh iowa Hi, Katie. Hi, Katie. So we, we were just talking about, just in general, Gossip Girl, is are we seeing it in a downhill spiral, or are we liking all the drama that we're getting? You know, I thought this first half of the season was pretty horrible. But, like, after, you know, they had their big 100 episode, which I don't feel like what led up to the hype, but I feel like every episode after that has been awesome and back to Gossip Girl form. 
Wow, that's really good to hear because I've been hearing a lot of mixed reviews, especially from my roommates who are f killing me. And I've even had two roommates who stopped watching now because they were like, well, this I is too much. There's some people that are invested in maybe one couple, and then there's some that are maybe invested in the whole show. And I understand that one, those that are faced with the one couple are upset, but... I don't you know. know I, I don't know who I like you're referring to. to. <laughs> I'm kind yeah, of like that. you know who I'm referring to. But I know. I'm like you know, I liked Chuck and Blair in the beginning, and I really did. But you know, I've been a fan since day one, and they weren't. They're not the whole show for me. So I feel like it's kind of picked up and been better writing, and then like I really didn't think the hundred episodes that great. But yeah, I struggled. I felt with like ever since then, it's been really snappy, and a lot of things have happened, and. It's, more gossip girl, more scheming, everything that you're looking for in this type of show. I liked the 100th episode. Um, and I have to say, because I've heard, like I said, we've heard mixed reviews. And you said your roommates are kind of like upset. with ha Half and half. Yeah. So my fiance, actually, he started watching it with me. And I used to never be able to get him to watch Gossip Girl. And these past couple episodes, because they're so action packed, he doesn't even feel like he has to catch up with the rest of the seasons. Like he's seen an episode here and there. Like he'll come in when I'm watching it and he'll just sit down for a little bit and then he'll get bored and he'll leave. But the past, this past season, he's just like stuck around and he's the one that's just like, whoa, oh my gosh. So, I mean, exactly. it's definitely um, to each his own, you know? Yeah, I completely agree with that. And I do think there's a lot and that's what I'm saying. It makes for good television. Um, and I just want to address Chuck and Blair and uh, Blair and Dan right now because we're talking about her whole prenup situation and what's going on. And as, as I started to admit last week and a little bit even the week before, I'm having this internal struggle because I am such a Chuck and Blair. F I am like Fanatic. a freaking groupie. <laughs> I mean, I love them so much, but I don't not There's like... There's quite a few of you out there. What? I said there's quite a few of you out there. Yeah, so that's true. There, there are a bunch of us out there, but I don't know. I think I kind of take it to the next unhealthy level where I'm like obsessed. obsessed. <laughs> but the problem. Me too, Rashi. Me too. Oh, thank gosh. I, that's why we, we need you here with me, Susie. But so we, uh, as a chair fan, I'm struggling because. Uh, Dan is just doing something for me that Chuck hasn't been doing. And when we see Chuck go back to these evil ways a little bit, does should is it time for her to grow up and go with the nice guy? I don't That's know. That's what I was thinking. In my opinion. Oh, well, that one wait, at a time. Okay, <laughs> uh, Katie, what are you thinking on this matter? Um, I guess basically, like, I feel like, you know, I was a Chuck and Blair fan for a very long time. And I feel like they have that great connection. But I just feel like right now, Dan Blair is where it has to be. They're they're just so cute. Like, every scene I watch together, I'm just like, aw. You know, like, you just can't all of a sudden start rooting for him. What do you and think, Dan's Susie? face when she showed up last night was just amazing i was never a dan fan until like they started kicking out like honestly i, love I mean when she, when she showed up last night and for the first time said so are you gonna let me in dan or what and he goes say my name you just said my name and she goes what and she he goes you just said my name and she goes dan and he goes say it again say it again that was so cute oh, i mean that that right there was a copy of episode 225 um, when, wow. when I said, I love you, and she said, say it, say it twice, and Dan said, say it again, and that made me so mad. But With Serena? I, mean, I don't know if it was a copy, but that's what it sounded like. Here's what I think. But you know, last night, because um, like you said, we're seeing a more evil side of Chuck, especially after he's professed to be this new man and whatnot, and, you know, earlier in the season when we thought we might have seen that side come out it didn't so it's a little surprising but um last night when Blair told Chuck I will always love you I'm just not in love with you maybe right now there's just been so much back and forth well she and says so, I'm not in love with you right now yeah she even puts that clause so in. I mean yeah. maybe there's just been so much back and forth and They've been going at it time and time again. Whenever one's available, the other's not. Whenever's one, whenever one is jealous, the other's not. And so she just needs 
something else. She needs that break. I've got to say, though, I kind of saw this coming because in interviews, Ed Westwick had said um, when they were asked, Penn Badgley and Ed Westwick were asked, which one of your characters loves Blair more? And Ed Westwick said his does, pointing to Penn Badgley, who plays Dan Humphrey. And so I almost thought this was a setup for us. Like, he doesn't want us to hate Dan. Dan and Blair together, you know, because he wants the show to do well it. and whatever. <laughs> I don't know. I'm just struggling a lot because I, it's like for years they've ingrained in our mind that this is the couple to be. I mean, they've got to be together. And they throw us through these hurdles and hurdles under the understanding that we're going to get them back. But we're not right now, and we're not pissed about it, or I'm not. So, And that's making me even more <laughs> flustered. And you can tell right now I'm just about to lose it. I mean, this is like the craziest love triangle of all time because it's when you're watching a movie, I mean... I just went to see This Means War this weekend, and it's like you don't know who you want the girl to end up with, and that's the worst feeling, and, and I kind of feel like it's my life, and I'm freaking out. <laughs> Somebody calm me down. Somebody say something. It's, it's okay. I understand that you and Blair have an intense relationship, and we you guys do. are BFFs, we do. and so it's natural for you to feel this way. Okay. I'm right there with you, Roxy. So uh, like, I totally agree. Uh, I mean, you're, you're freaking out. Susie, you're freaking out. I'm liking yes, Dan uh, like, and Blair. Like, I'm freaking out because I, I, I like, it, I like Dan and Blair just a teeny tiny bit. Like, and that's freaking me out. But hopefully, uh, like, hopefully, I know that Chuck and Blair will end up together. Like, I'm hoping, keeping my fingers crossed. Oh my so that's God. why. Wait, Katie, what are you saying? What do you think? Do you want to see? Chuck and Blair I, together in the end, or are you okay with her ending up with Dan? Yeah, I think she's gonna end up with Dan. I'm sorry. You, like, I don't feel be like sorry. The, the writers have planned this. I feel like they're Lily and Rufus part two, basically. Like, I feel like the nice writers maybe set this up, and I don't know. Like, just Blair's always said she wants someone that loves her for all of her. You know. <laughs> That's a really and, good point. It is, but I feel like and Dan think, obviously knows all of her. He knows the best parts of her, but obviously he knows the worst parts of her. He wrote the wedding vows. He, yeah. yeah, he did. I mean, I don't know. It's just like I feel like he, like all season, Dan has like sacrificed like any type of shred of hope with her. Katie, her I agree with you, but uh, I will say it's kind of, you know in an unfair situation because she's allowed Dan recently to f get to know more parts of her and hasn't allowed Chuck because she's constantly trying so much to push him away. Why is she trying to push him away so much? Is she scared? Is she really just falling for Dan? Or or why, why doesn't she want to be a Chuck? I think it started out I as her being scared and then she just unexpectedly fell for Dan. Like, obviously I, she I didn't like expect that. I feel like since the kiss last year, like a year ago, was it exactly a year ago, I feel like she's just been in denial about Dan. Really? And see, like, I didn't you know, see that and, at the beginning. Because why would she spend a week in bed if she's just like, oh, I love Chuck? I mean, that doesn't make sense. I don't know. It's just like, I feel like the writers have set this up for her to finally like, figure it out. No, maybe this is the guy for me. He's not a prince. He's not the king of an empire, but... It's scary it's for me to it. keep talking about it because I, I get converted. The more I talk about it, the more I'm like, is this okay? Will I be okay with this? And now I feel like a traitor. I mean, to but I you just have to go with the flow. The car crash, I think Chuck and Blair would be together right now, right? I mean, I, I oh, mean, if it weren't for the car crash, right? right? I Which mean, brings up the entire thing. Uh, another piece of information we find out in last night's episode is that, uh, uh, Jesus, what is Chuck's cousin's name? Who or Jay, Jack. Oh, Jack? Jack. Yeah, she, Jack he, donated blood. So Chuck mm -hmm. thought that Blair donated blood, but really it was Jack. Yeah. So why did Blair make him think that? Who cares? Who okay. cares? <laughs> I'm like, I'm a nurse. I'm like, who cares? I'm like, he could have got anyone off the street in New York to do that. No, I, a big deal with I that, agree but. with that. But why would Blair want him to think that it was her blood? Did she ever tell him that? I mean, he may have just like. I thought he maybe thought it was her that saved him because 
she, like, you know, made a sacrifice or something. I didn't get that he thought, like, she had blood, though. He probably just assumed because, you know, she made that promise and she was so invested in him surviving. And, and... I hope they don't make that Chuck's reason for not loving her anymore. Like, oh, I thought that she saved my life, but really it was my cousin. So goodbye, Blair, you know, like, dramatic yeah. like that. You guys are laughing, yeah. but they do that shit to me all the time. They do. They I, try I to mess didn't with realize us. that. Oh my goodness. I didn't... <laughs> Susie, what are you I saying? Can't hear it. <laughs> no, I was just saying I didn't realize that Chuck thought Blair donated her blood to him. But they I never explained part, it, just like but... they haven't explained twenty million things. I know. <laughs> it, it, they they really didn't explain it and this whole we're gonna just have to wait and see what happens with this uh prenup situation because in the end what we see is that uh, Michelle Trottenberg, who is Georgina Sparks, ends up leaving her post at Gossip Girl after everything hits the fan. And I was going to say shit hits the fan, but I feel like I swore so many times this episode. I don't know why. <laughs> um, but, Potty mouth. So, yeah, geez. This, it's just bringing the worst out in me right now. Anyway, though, so she leaves her post at Gossip Girl, and she is making deals with everybody because she wants to get on people's good sides and have people owe her favors. So she makes this deal with Blair. We don't even really know what it is. All we know is that she intends on getting Blair out of this marriage with Louis, correct? Yes. What's the deal? Everyone's yeah. teaming up with Georgina. She made a deal with Elsie earlier in the episode, and everyone hated Georgina. Like, how is she getting yeah. all of these people on her side all of a sudden? She's still the same Georgina. She's okay, Katie, Serena I need... totally, like... Yeah, go ahead. Sorry, Serena totally, like, didn't care that she was at the funeral, She at the wake or whatever. She was just like, oh, why are you here? And then she just walked away. I just found that funny. But, like, why would Georgina be there? I don't know. She's so random. I, she said so, she was well, like... Well, Ch well, Chidi invited her, but... Yeah, and she yeah. was like, I'm wake crashing. Like, this was the least respectful funeral of all time. I mean, wake crashing, Irish music, food, everybody was well, wasted. Well, it was Irish wake. I mean, that's what they do, but yeah. That 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 is true, but it's not, at Irish wakes, it's not you about fighting Irish about things. They, they were fighting and arguing over and over again, and I, I don't know. I just thought that this was not No respectful. one shed a tear. <laughs> like, yeah. no one was sad <laughs> it is it is good to celebrate life yeah they did uh, take shots they did take shots it was like <laughs> freaking wacky um okay and they were just worried about the money that's it right uh, like who gets what who gets what that's it so then the last thing that we see, and then we're going to have to cut to commercial uh, because we're, we're even running short on time because this episode was so long, but I mean, not longer than usual, but so much happened. So much going um, on. The last thing we see is that Georgina gives up her post and she's giving Gossip Girl to Serena. She's mailing it to Serena. Oh, yeah. Okay. Oh, my God. So thoughts across the table, starting with Susie. Is, is Serena going to accept? I mean, what's the deal with this? I I, I mean, I have no idea what she's going to think. Or, I mean, I feel like she's going to do it. I don't know, though. But it was just so weird. I don't know. Katie, what do you think? I think so, because she's searching for, it seems like, some purpose right now. But I kind of don't like it. I liked it before when Gossip Girl was whoever Gossip Girl was. No one knew, right? It's like yeah, everyone's I passing like it off. I like her as, like, some other entity. I don't like her as... Georgina, Georgina, take turns like, on Gossip Girl. Do you guys think that maybe the whole secret of Gossip Girl is that Gossip Girl has always been passed off and hasn't been one person? No, because yeah. I think it would have it would have hit the most popular girls of the Upper East, East Side by now. I think that Serena has so much animosity in her head right now, you know, towards whether she's going to say it or not, like towards the whole Dan and Blair situation, now the Charlie Ivy situation, Lola doesn't want anything to do with her, especially once she finds out about her dad and her new sister. Um, <laughs> I just think, and, and then, uh. you know, once she gets that computer, it has so many secrets, and that's just going to add to it, because I'm sure some of them are about her being betray betrayed in one way or another, and I think she's going to take it on. Oh, my gosh. There is yeah. just so much. Okay, Susie, Katie, thank you guys so much for coming in. I mean, calling. Call. <laughs> you didn't come in. I don't, I'm not sitting next to you for calling in. You guys I'm are so awesome. Sad. I'm so sad. This is the last one until 
um, April. I like, know. I'm April? Business. Freaking out. This show and Glee, they're holding off on me for so long. I'm fucking out. Oh, what am I going to so do? Mad. I'm not going to be here on Tuesday nights. It's going to be like I'm going to have to pick up more shows or something. Yeah. I'm going to go nuts. But thank you guys for calling and, in, um, and we will talk to you guys you. Do, not that do me a favor and tell, tell Maria congratulations, and I'm rooting for yes, her. Yes, oh, very awesome. excited. For those of you who don't know, she is now one of the celebrities on Dancing with the Stars. Woo. She's going to kick butt, and hopefully we can even get her in here to teach me some dance moves because... I, I all them. I can do is Jersey Turnpike <laughs> right now. Uh, and you do a good <laughs> Jersey Turnpike. We need to diversify our dance moves a little bit. <laughs> Seriously. Okay, thanks guys for calling in, and let's cut to Bye. a commercial. Bye. 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 After Buzz TV. Hi, I was once like you, a lazy, angry loner whose only joy was watching TV and surfing the net. And like you, after I'd see one of my favorite TV shows, I'd be so excited and have so many questions that I'd actually have to talk to my douchebag coworkers about it at the water cooler. Then I discovered AfterBuzzTV.com. AfterBuzz TV produces after-show webcasts and podcasts for TV series of all kinds like post-game wrap-up shows for all your favorite TV shows. AfterBuzz TV hosts are industry insiders who break down episodes of shows, take calls from fans, and interview cast and crew from each series with over 60 different after shows, from Boardwalk Empire to American Idol to Vampire Diaries to Real Housewives and more. Now, after a night of TV, I can ignore my stupid co-workers, who I hate, and go straight to my desk and watch or listen to all my favorite AfterBuzz TV after shows and have all the TV fan interaction I need. Thank you, AfterBuzz TV. AfterBuzz TV. What do you want to buzz about? Okay, great. So let's go right into news and gossip. Please. Um, Before we do news and gossip about everybody else, again, I just wanted to say, Maria, congratulations. It's freaking awesome. So exciting. Um, Everybody call in. you, Maria. My my Grammy already said, she was like, this is so exciting. I I have three phones and I can call five times from (laughs) each phone and I'm freaking out. And I'm like, okay, Graham. Vote for Maria. Vote for Maria. So awesome. She's going to kick butt. All right. So... Why? Why am I doing this right now? Why? Why are you not reading this news and gossip? Excuse my. You have to work on your five-year-old your reading level. <laughs> yeah, Jesus. Okay, so Blake Lively and Ryan Reynolds were absent from any pre or post Oscar parties this past weekend. Instead, they were spotted getting cozy during a low-key weekend in Nashville. Radar Online reports that the pair was spotted munching on pancakes, drinking coffee, and strolling through parks. In matching hats, may we add. That's cute. According to an eyewitness, though, <laughs> the celebrity couple were treated like common folk. Quote, the two waited in line for nearly 25 minutes because the pancake pantry is known to have very long lines. Matching hats. Are they like 10? Um, and what are they, were these like baseball caps? I got to find a picture of yeah. this. Or like big sombrero. Or were they like... <laughs> I don't know. We're going to have to look that up. But Little beanies with ears I love ears that. They were them. treated like common folk because they waited 25 full minutes. Like, yeah. Which brings me to a random piece of gossip. When I went to the Obama, uh, Obama was talking in Bel Air um, uh, two weeks ago, and Mila Kunis was there, and we were all waiting in line, and I really like her as an actress, but she tried to, as if it was Hollywood's hottest club, cut the line to get into oh, Obama speaking. I was like, that sucks. honey, what? Are you kidding? Uh, Don Cheadle's here. Uh, Jack, Jack Black. Every major celebrity of all time is here. Yeah. You and you are trying to cut the line. Like, what are you doing? That sucks. And so of course, I like her a lot. Of course, the bouncer was like. Who are you? And get to the back of the line. Good. Like, good for him. So I'm glad. I, I like how you called it the bouncer at the Obama yeah. speech. The, the, the a bouncer. bouncer. <laughs> Maybe a bodyguard. Bob, I don't know. The body, secret <laughs> service. More <laughs> like that. But anyway, so I'm glad that Blake and Ryan weren't trying to push to the front of this pancake yeah, house. A little more news on them. So last week reported that Lively was pushing Reynolds to propose to her and that he was a little hesitant. However, this week, friends of the couple say that they've already got their family's approval to start ring shopping. The friend said, quote, Ryan and Blake are talking about rings. Blake really wants to find a vintage ring and have it reset. Blake's family adores Ryan. Blake's sister Lori even refers to him in conversation as her future brother-in-law. She's telling everyone Ryan is family. She says that it's 
that Blake has found the one. She feels like the luckly, luckiest girl in the world and that her career is going great. That she's landed Mr. Right and her family approves. You go, Blake. I love hearing about how wonderful other people's lives are and how perfect it is. How do we have wow. two completely opposite stories about the same exact subject one week after the another? I really don't like, know. What do you, how do you know what to believe? One week, Brian doesn't want to rush into things because he's rushed into marriage once before. And then next week, they're on the go, ready to tie the knot. Woohoo. I mean, <laughs> and honestly, I hope... How when you were proposed to, were you shocked? Was it a mutual? Did you go ring shopping? How does that work? I was totally shocked. I didn't go ring shopping. That's what although I want. I That's hinted what I need. to what I wanted. Um, but yeah, and it was like years later. It wasn't after like five months of dating. Six or, months. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's crazy. So, like, what if you turned to your fiance one day before he, your boyfriend and you said, "I am ready to get married." Uh, proposed to me. And this is the ring I actually want. So come here. Yeah. Um, and I already asked my parents for you. And they said it's cool. So let's just get the show on the road, you know? Yeah. Um, I sure never that's... I never brought it up to my fiance. Obviously, we talked about marriage beforehand and whatever in passing. But I was never like, you better propose or else. Because my biggest fear was that I never wanted him to do it out of, you know, fear that I would dump him or because he felt bad. Because right. I just feel like that would be... A horrible thing to live with but that I pressured him into proposing to me so I wanted it exactly. to be when he was ready when he felt it was right and I was totally surprised and I would wouldn't want it any other way who knew who knows though I mean if the story's true or not I mean yeah. what the friend of a friend of a friend who what the hell so we don't know all right a little bit of different news and gossip this week about Kristen Bell because she is the voice of Gossip Girl and she recently sat down with the advocate to talk about all the wonderful things going on in her life, her new TV show, her bestie Zachary Quinto coming out, and her up and coming wedding to the wonderful Dax Shepard. Well, actually, no wedding plans have happened quite yet. Turns out Kristen and Dax have decided to put the, mo uh, the momentous occasion on hold for now until some serious changes are made in our country. She explains in an interview, I get a ton of questions about when Dax and I are getting married. Don't tell me what she's going to say. No, it's... I already know. <laughs> I, I, it's actually really great. I usually blow them off because it's nobody's business, to be honest with you. And this is the first time I've ever said this to a journalist, but it feels like the perfect time and place. The reason we're not rushing into getting married is because I don't feel appropriate taking advantage of a right that's denied to my best friend. That, that's why we've been so hesitant. Dax and I have talked a lot about it, and this issue is very important to both of us. We're just standing up for what we believe in, period. I totally respect that. But that's exactly what Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt have yeah. given reason for why they're not getting married. It is true, but I don't think she's doing it to be trendy like Angelina. Yeah. And Brad. So I do respect it. Um, and it's interesting. And it, like, come on. What's wrong with our freaking country? Exactly. Like, come Everyone on. Everyone should have those rights. I, I just don't understand. I mean, maybe this is not the medium to share my political opinions, but really? Yeah. Like who 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 cares? Get married sense. if you want to get married. Yeah. It's not affecting my life. So I mean, at the end of the day, it is just giving more awareness. So that's good that she did it, whether it's trendy or not. Right. I don't think it is in the, this case either. Exactly. And that that news and gossip actually broke a couple of weeks ago. But I thought it was an important thing to bring up because um, usually we just have fun wedding Blake and Ryan stuff. But now no, this and is real. I told it like I said, I totally respect what she says. The only reason why I said that is because. Like Brad and Angie said it a couple years ago, and then now they're doing interviews, even though they said that, and it still isn't, you know, allowed in our in California, unfortunately. Um, now they're like, well, maybe we will get married. The kids are asking, so it's like, don't but, say something like that, and then maybe possibly think about going back on it, especially when you're making these public interviews, because it's like, I want them. I want her to take that stance, but then like stick with it. Don't decide. You the know. only the only big difference on this one is the Zachary Quinto being her best friend and, yeah. and her kind of really supporting. So Having I think at that. the end of the day, that's yeah. more what it's about, possibly. Yeah. yeah, and I do agree with that. But the problem is, it. I mean, he just came out, so she's making the stance. But had stance, but had he not come out, maybe she wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And it 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 has to be really close to home for you. Yeah, and that's a, an issue in this country. I mean, totally. It, it's not until it's in your backyard that you give a crap about it. Mm -hmm. So, I Every, mean, everyone needs to live and let live. That's just, just it, yeah. you know. Like uh, Vinny tattooed on his chest. Or as my favorite, <laughs> my favorite Glee quote of the week was, "Love is love, man." 
Love is love. Love is love, love man. Is love. Okay, so that is our news and gossip for the week of Leap Year Week, February 28th. Uh, oh, my God. Leap Year is tomorrow. tomorrow. Crazy. Crazy. All right, let's uh, Yep, this is took the words right out of my now, mouth. Jumping into you're after Buzz TV. So, this sucks, man. I mean, we're predicting what's happening on April 2nd. What the hell? Meanwhile, I will say, in that time period, I will have gone to co uh, to no 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 to spring break Cabo. So oh, uh, maybe you. I'll come back nice and tan for you guys. <laughs> and I don't think a lot of the reality shows are taking a break. Thank God, because I would, would just lose my mind. Um, even, I host four shows here. You should join one of mine. We'll find something. Okay, we will definitely <laughs> find something, and that goes for you too. We'll we'll, we'll team up on something. I know we're like homeless. <laughs> Speaking of home, though, we really do need to do a Homeland after show. Phil's been on our case about that, so we can work on that. Blah, blah, blah. Let's stick to Gossip Girl because everybody else is like, what the hell are these people talking about now? Uh, okay, so the only thing that I saw before DVR cut off was that the sex, Dan and Blair have sex, and it is awful. I didn't even see that. So I'm like, what? They end up, we see them both, and they both lie there with the covers over them and turn over to each other and go, Wow. Uh-huh. And then later on, they're each talking to their friends, and they were like, it was horrible. It was not good. And then Blair confronts him later and was like, when I said wow, I really meant, and then my DVR cut off. But. Oh, my god, That was pretty much what we see <laughs> happening uh, in a month from now. So yeah. this is going to be crazy. So one mountain and counting. Maybe they realize they're just best friends. And even though they have chemistry on the lips, they don't have chemistry down below, and they can't be together. And we know that Blair and Chuck get it on in the sheet. So, well, yep, I mean, we'll the back. first time's always awkward when you've known someone for that long, and you thought you hated them, and then you thought you loved them, and then they dated your best friend. So maybe they just had a, tr- a bad trial run, and then their sister, and their, and then you end up being your family, <laughs> yeah. and da, 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 like what the hell is even happening in the show? So you never know. Um, thank you, because otherwise I would have just talked about incest for another <laughs> few minutes here. All right. We will not be back here next week. We will be doing other things like crying and wondering what the hell is going to happen. But during this month period, we expect you guys to tweet at us. We will tweet back at you. Tell us what you're thinking. Tell us what's going on. Um, And really, we need to support each other right now in our time of need without this show. I'm freaking out. Uh, Okay, Jessica, where can we find you? At I am Jessica King. At Roxy Stryer. And we will see you guys on in April a month. 2nd. No, April 3rd, because. Oh, right. April 2nd's the episode. April 3rd, we will be back here. Until then, XOXO, we'll miss XO, you baby. Guys. From Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. 